thought we were recording. Maybe this SD card is failing. Now I'm already here at some... Can I go back here? This was a web-based. So much for going back for the camera. That is of course a little bit of a fail now. Not knowing here any other tricks, I guess I have no other choice than rebooting. So this boot is a little bit painfully slow. Um, the other day I saw some Unix gentlemen ranting about running Linux instead of Unix. I have to say I find this whole thing here highly uncomfortable. Installation takes forever. This startup takes forever, the installation, I going back, I messed this easy setup startup thing here up. So welcome to the system setup, make your system secure. I wonder a little bit why it's delivered unsecure, but whatever. So, um, and here is also important, if you do not run the improved system security task, your system may be at risk. And um, why do they ship it may be at risk is also Oh, wait. I made the same mistake again. I clicked twice and then it comes was unsuccessful. Yeah, let's see this time we don't go back. Adding password. Okay, so maybe it's not doing it immediately. I don't do the others. I will not use it for serious work anyway and I don't want to add here so many passwords now. So just continue. The other script we just leave as it is. I was mostly interested in the root password, obviously. Should NIS accounts be removed to prevent people from using them to log into the system? Don't use this here, so whatever. Um, also funny that it doesn't come by default with a shadow password file. I thought that was already standard a long time ago. So shadow password file, hell yes. If you require passwords to log in, the system will refuse access to any user who does not have a password. So I leave it as no, as I probably want to run the guest and demo user later here for the video. I actually comes with a feature called visual login screen. The visual login screen displays a graphic or an icon for each user. Disable, no, I guess we want graphic. Disable privileged users, yes, no for now. Uh, protect new users. Um, limit access to all new users files, I guess yes. Whatever. The IP forwarding is also usually only for routers, no? Hmm. Whatever. This task has been successfully completed. Okay, um, step two, set up your network connection. Before you begin setting up and starting networking, you have to read all this stuff. Huh? Problem is I eventually run out of battery and SD card space. Okay, they basically say again what we already knew. As shipped by SGI, this system has no passwords on the following accounts, root, LP, and so easy set up demos out of box guests. If you leave these or any other accounts open when you enable network, your system will be significant address with malicious attacks. So yeah, thank you very much for shipping it in such a shitty state, I would say, but um, whatever. Um, next, next, DHCP, next. Okay. Successfully completed. Step three, create a user account. Oh, wait, I, I at user. So we have no German keyboard yet. How should I type my exosan? Hmm. Leave new account unprotected. Should have a password. And why do they have then leave new account unprotected? Protected this. Uh, hello? Were they crazy back in the day, two decades ago? Uh, the password you entered is too long. S of, s of six to eight letters or numbers. What? So user IDs are funny. Hi, I saw this in the installation already. Did not complete. Why? Why? So for whatever reason I on the second and third try I really can't add the user so I guess we customize your work environment. Uh, can I create a user account? If you did not after you completed these tasks configure. Okay let me play with this a little more minute of camera to understand what's going on here. Okay 
given we are unable to create a new user let's see what happens with the demo guest and root account for now or maybe we can manually create a user whatever is going wrong there Obviously want to see some 3D demos, right? But somehow does not look too much like 3D demos here. 4D window manager. What is also nice that I now have an RX installation. I never had this before. I maybe could disassemble some X driver stuff and figure out how to program the hardware cursor. For the Linux impact driver I hacked basic hardware cursor support, however I currently can only enable and move it, I cannot yet upload the cursor shape because they changed it from the new port driver or where it was slightly similar from this video controller here but um, yeah I still need to figure out there's some second port address stuff thing to really upload this icon into the RAM deck output memory thing there. So um, demos was not so successful I thought I installed everything though. What do we have here? Well, here's slightly more. Dumpster, microphone. Boy, oh, we have Netscape. As I would have to cut most of this out, I will try a little bit off camera anyway. Yeah, but unfortunately there's really something strange going on because Many of the things here I can't open, they blink off shortly and close immediately starting with uh, where was it system yeah, process manager. It appears shortly and disappears instantly. And many of the other stuff also, so even file system manager or access files in my home directory. Hmm. Why is it? Some things work, but even control audio does nothing, I think. So, hmm. I maybe I wonder if I have to reinstall without the freeware stuff to avoid some of the warnings or something. I hope you understand why I gave up installing this a decade ago and why even the second attempt is a really strange experience. It also took enormous time, I think it was probably running three hours or something. So, and now doesn't even fully work. I find this installation procedure quite tedious and I would, from such an expensive machine and well-established vendor, I would expect that it works flawlessly and not that some things are not starting. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this first time RX installation experience on this SGI Octane and could learn something new. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe. Boy, we have Netscape. I wonder, um, also this DHCP did not set default root and name server, so I manually edited uh, etcresolve.conf or created it, it didn't exist. And here in, in etc config is some static dash root options, but I manually run, the syntax is slightly different from Linux. Where is it root at default? And since this works here, let's see if this fixes something. Network error occurred. Um, network error occurred. Hmm. Ah, oh, but this works. Did I... Well, oh, maybe. Do we default to HTTPS somehow? Maybe I redirect this. Um, okay, so there is something coming. Obviously not looking perfect anymore, but... We could at least look up here the SGI Octane, right? Okay. Does this DNS stuff change anything regards this non-working stuff? I 
really want to avoid the stuff with clothing instantly. No, thank you very much. The only thing I don't need, the printer does work. But I want here the interesting stuff. Not a printer manager. Besides, we want 3D games and 3D graphics and uh, 3D demos and uh, all the other awesome stuff. We have mail? Hmm. I also enabled opaque window moves. I like it much more than this outline. So now we are talking. I tried to run you some XSET MON and this is indeed segmentation faulting here. And um, so we don't have a GDB. Do we have a, what is it? Debugger X. Okay, so now we have a core file and no debugger. I wonder if it is rated with this. Uh, Stuff that ran out of space is uh, pre-linking something, whatever failed after the installation. So yeah, I mean, some things are running um, for comfortable use, of course. Um, all the good stuff is sick faulting. Um, totally surprising for me for such an expensive system installed for three hours from the original CD set. Unfortunately, quite a bit of a disappointment. So. Smash a like button to motivate me to reinstall it, otherwise I probably continue implementing Linux drivers because things like this don't make me the greatest old-fashioned Unix fan. I found here some other user has a similar problem and someone is writing here, quote, I think I know what's wrong, sometimes the recuse procedure messes the things up after a new software installation. It happens when there are too many conflicting shared libraries installed. When a process requests memory via one of the libc functions like malloc, calloc, realloc, free, and the built-in operators new delete, the call, blah blah blah, and so on, and um, whatever, this risk qual process that we have seen failing at the end of the installation. So um, I guess I have to reinstall it without all the optional freeware stuff whatsoever. But of course it's ridiculous that SGI shipped it like this, that it doesn't even install properly. Is it starting or not? 